Thank you, Cus Paladin Autanicus, for joining me on my coffee break. I am getting ready for bed, so I don't have a coffee. Do you have a coffee at this time? Uh, I got close enough to a coffee. It's an, uh, after all, it's an iced coffee. <laughs> you seem to enjoy your iced coffees. Well, when the weather's w a little bit on the warm side, you don't really need to go too heavily on an actual coffee. So, every day of the year in Australia, then? Not every day of the year, but about six months of it. <laughs> Australia doesn't get cold. Eh, some would disagree with you. Mostly those in Tasmania. I know I probably asked you this elsewhere, but if I haven't, why do you like Fallout so much? That's an interesting little question. I guess you could say I'm in. I like the whole concept of uh, the Fallout bit, of uh, like with Mad Max and that, the whole post-apocalyptic side. With uh, humanity trying to rebuild and continue on after the fact, well, after the whole basically world ending apocalypse. Have you watched the deal. Mad Max movies? Yeah. Yeah, the, I saw them quite a fair few years ago. Have you seen the newest Mad Max movie? Yeah, I saw that. I wasn't entirely all that impressed by it. Uh, the concept was nice and all, but the execution of the Mad Max character was uh, a little pretty subpar, in my opinion. Do you enjoy the original Mad Max movie? Yeah. Yeah, uh, after all, the first, third, uh, I'm getting myself tongue-tied. The first Mad Max movie I watched, actually, was Thunderdome, and I went back and watched the others. The first one's a different movie than the ones that come after it. Oh, indeed. Since it was less post-apocalyptic, uh, in a sense, compared to its uh, sequels. Since the first one, you had uh, a lot more what looks like a town that's pretty desolate sort of thing. So, what is your favorite Mad Max movie then? I'd say probably the second one. With the field uh, truck that they... Basically, they turn into a fortress on wheels. There. You mean the to and... You mean the distraction? Yeah. Where they go ahead and got that kid with the bo metal boomerang, and the dude tries to catch it and slashes his fingers off, and all the rest. How does the kid catch the boomerang? Reinforced gauntlet. The kid's got some sort of baseball mitt sort of thing going on in his glove, so he's able to grab it without slashing himself. Is the video game any good? I've played the video game a little bit, and I've seen a bit of it. Uh, it is actually very on par with the whole Mad Max concept with the post-apocalyptic side. Through, they went a little bit more in detail with uh, some of the things that you eat than what uh, some other games like Fallout have. Is there a Fallout 5 in production? Oh, well, that's what we're all hoping for. But we're just going to have to wait and see since until like a... The, a year, maybe a year and a half beforehand, they usually don't let you know about that stuff too much. But, uh, hell. And 
I think they're probably just going to wait and see how the movie bit goes with uh, the whole TV series that they're doing on uh, Amazon. You have Amazon Prime? Yeah. You excited for the TV series? Uh, A little bit, but I'm more interested and concerned about what some of the things that they've done in it are is going to be since from watching the trailer with it being in LA and the like, it's got to be very much like they could have gone anywhere around, did anything without a problem, but I'm going to be very surprised uh, how they're going to try and explain the whole LA bit since LA was supposed to be nuked to hell and back sort of thing. Not as bad as what, uh, the capital wasteland was with Washington, but still pretty heavily, and that's what's got me a little curious on that front. It's how they got to try and explain it, or if they got to be doing like they do with seventy six, and just roll with their own thing and not really go with what's already in the canon. What game is that established in? With uh, one and two. It's the whole West Coast bit with uh, you basically helping to create the NCR and all the rest within one. Is the Brotherhood of Steel different on the East Coast and the West Coast? It is depending on the game because within three... Elder Lions went more along the lines of, yes, we're going to go ahead and grab technology and board it for our own means, as uh, the core principle within the Brotherhood is, sort of thing to stop uh, another apocalypse sort of deal is the reasoning for it, but it's more along the lines is, we can't trust any civilians with this high-rate, well, high-powered weaponry anymore sort of deal militaristic thinking while uh, Lions on on the other hand does try to maintain a friendly decor with the civilian population by offering to send his brotherhood members out to patrol and protect uh, the various in- Settlements throughout uh, the capital wasteland from raiders and the like, which is cool. Definitely uh, appeals to me on that front, considering it does a lot more than a number of other elders who basically shut themselves into the tight little box and basically go on a war on all fronts within their region against everybody from just grabbing all the technology and shoving it into Pandora's box, so to speak. Because all the Fallout games happen in America. Even the the expansions still happen in America. Well, America and Canada, but yeah. There's expansions that go into Canada? There is one. It's uh, from out of Fallout 3 where you go into a simulation that basically does the whole Canada side with Operation Anchorage. Tell me about that expansion. Basically, with that one, you find uh, a offshoot of the Brotherhood, a bunch of the Brotherhood members that did not agree with Lion's approach and decide to splinter themselves off into a sub-branch known as the Outcasts. Uh, Specifically, the Brotherhood Outcasts. These Outcasts then go with the original tenet of hoarding technology and bunkering themselves down, sort of deal. uh, But they are willing to talk to certain civilians if they have the appropriate means to help them out. Your character is one such civilian because of the pit boy you have, which allows you access to a simulator 
that they have access to at their base, which is rigged to open up an armory door with a whole bunch of pre-war tech in it, if you're able to complete the simulation, which happens to be a battle simulation up in Canada where the U.S. Army versus uh, the Chinese Army over one of the last um, facilities that have uh, a working um, petrol line, so to speak, a refinery sort of deal with... uh, And as such, you go ahead and get placed uh, on top of a cliff. You work your way through a Chinese bay, well, through a bunch of Chinese forces up to where there's some guns and disable them before you get flown down. Uh, I think it's flown down since it uh, basically opens up the loading screen and transitions you within the U.S. encampment where you got to go through some trench warfare into enemy lines and take out the enemy general in order to seize control of uh, the refinery. Once you do, the simulation ends. You pop back up uh, where you were in DC. You're able to then unlock the armory door, and you're able to get some of the technology that was in the simulation, which includes the Chinese stealth suit. That uh, basically works like a charm if you're going for the whole sneaky build. Because it renders you invisible to enemies so long as you don't move. Sort of deal. So, was vault in Canada? Do we know? So, you, so it does, sounds like we have no idea if, from the games... If vault was in Canada or South America or even Australia. Pretty much. There's no real reference to vault being anywhere but within the North America region. Sort of thing. But, uh... Is there the reference other... to vault being in Canada? Not that I've heard of yet. Just so far, it's been the United States itself. But I wouldn't be surprised if there was a vault within Canada or one even down in Mexico, for example. Considering uh, why would they limit themselves to one very specific spot too much instead of where that government's influence would have had access? As such, uh, I do know that, uh, as I've mentioned in a previous recording of yours, video of yours, uh, that there was one other expansion that was basically not uh, based solely within the U.S., and that was the mother uh, Mothership Zeta one, where you get... Uh, yoinked in out of space by a bunch of aliens and bash your way through their mothership and then get control of it. And you're able to look down upon the world uh, from out of the the ship's bridge. That's also Fallout 3, isn't it? Yes. I enjoy... I enjoy talking Fallout with you. You'll have to... Keep uh, tell me when the fall TV series is live, so we can talk about that. How it goes with the first episode. Uh, I will talk to you in the future. Thank you for your time. No worries. I hope you have a great day.